I was doing art A-level and the question was to make a sculpture entitled The Embrace. Growing up on the farm I'd often seen lambs lying and they lie to keep their heads warm and it's sort of like an embrace. Ended up selling it to one of the parents for 50 pounds. It was brilliant and somebody had given me some money for something that I'd made. I'd never heard of actually people making a living out of art. So I didn't really think of it as a career. I ended up traveling a bit in Africa and you know just had all this inspiration. I was incredibly lucky to see these wild animals in their natural habitat. My main inspiration comes from wildlife. And I love traveling to go and look at wildlife. Very soft, aren't they? If I can sculpt in front of my subject, I will. I actually have a sort of portable studio box. You're not sure about me, are you? That I've sort of built and designed to come with me. Sometimes I'm in a field with a bull or I'm in a stable with a horse. I've sculpted albatross from the back of a boat. I've sculpted Arabian gazelle in the desert. I'm turning clay into an animal. And for me to try and make cold, hard metal feel alive, you should be able to look a bronze in the eye and see life. Photographing an animal in its natural habitat uh, rather than in a zoo is very important to me to get an understanding of what the animal looks like, not just as a physical form, but also what's going on up here. You can see it's quite a physical game, certainly at this stage, and that's sort of initial stage I love, and it's really exciting. I get the music blaring. I'm not going to mention my bad dancing. I'm not just making a model. I'm making my interpretation of what I think that subject's about. For example, I've seen wild boar in the Ardennes. Wild boar are funny, you know, they're, they're primeval. You know, they're characters. I very much hope that I can get that into some of my sculpture. It always begins quite quick and it's quite physical. Further into it, you get the more sort of slow and detailed and then precise, and then by the time I get to the end, it's really tight work. There we go, uh, all finished, ready to go to the foundry. I have a fantastic relationship with Lockburn Foundry. It started by chance. The family that bought my clay lambs got them cast into bronze using Lockbund, which was run by Simon Allison. He was a huge support to me at the beginning and remains a huge support. Pretty key person in my life. Thank you, Hamish. Funny. That's nice to hear. <laughs> yeah, it was a good beginning. Yeah. Simon got in touch with me as the artist and asked me if, if it was right to change the medium of my rather fragile clay lambs into, into something more durable in bronze. And, and of course, I mean, I didn't know what a medium was. I thought he was talking about ghosts or something. And I couldn't fund casting. Bronze casting is expensive. And Simon, really without me asking, said, look, you, you make what you want to make. Uh, I'll cast it, and then you pay me back when you sell it. The thing is, is that we had confidence in each other. Yeah. I mean, I remember you yeah. coming to me and talking to me about, you know, what can I do in bronze? Yeah. And I said, listen. Well, I remember what you said. You said, you said, you make it, I'll cast it. Exactly. Yeah. And that's what we've been doing ever since. Predominantly, I'm casting into bronze, basically because it's strong and it's durable and it's going to last for generations. I also cast into silver. Silver is a really lovely material to work with. And I, I try and treat it in a sort of unprecious way, um, which is almost quite difficult when you're dealing with something this big. But it, that will look fantastic once it's finished. The big challenge for us was going from bronze really to stainless steel, I think. You know, I remember saying to Simon, I've made this big ammonite and um, I think it looked really cool, marine grade polished stainless steel. When you compare the two, bronze casting is a little bit like making a cake in the oven. Yeah. Because when the bronze is molten in the pot, you can look at it directly. Yeah. 
when the stainless steel is molten in the pot, you don't look at it because you'll just go blind. Because it's white. It's white heat like the sun. They built this induction tilt furnace and they did it. For me as an artist, as a sculptor, it's, it's important to have that faith and that trust in a foundry. Yeah. I used the old lost wax bronze casting method, which has been around for about 6,000 years. I was casting one or two things a year, and it was all quite small. Now, there's a team of 16 at Hot Fund working on getting my original into bronze. And there's some great skill sets all the way through. You've got the mold making, the bronze pouring, the ceramic, the wax work. You know, at the end of the day, I should get back to something that's been totally made by hand. And I shouldn't be able to see the difference from what I gave them in the first place and, and, and what I get back from the foundry. So it's totally handmade in England. It's, it's amazing. The wax is coated in ceramic. That eventually gets burnt out, hence the term lost wax. And we end up with a hollow negative uh, in the ceramic where we then uh, pour the liquid bronze. I exhibit at Chelsea Flower Show every year. I've got a great position for my stand. It's right at the top of Main Avenue. How are you today? Yeah, good, thank you. Good, nice good. good. Um, I have to spend a whole week being nice to people. Uh, <laughs> how's that going so far? Uh, we're, we're An hour in, you don't Early like doors. <laughs> Working in a studio, you know, I might see two or three people a week. So Chelsea is sort of overload. So what's the aim to sell as, as many pieces? Yeah, I, I did to sell lots, pick up lots of names and addresses, lot, meet lots of nice people. You know, you might go home and you might think in six years' time, I need to put something over there. And you might think, oh, I did meet some weirdo with, with this lot. It's a really good time to meet lots of clients. Jeez. And it really helps get what I'm doing out there. Yeah, she's bad. Look at these. Oh, thank you. Yeah, amazing. Last year, last summer, I was lucky to meet Nina Campbell, who's probably one of the most famous interior designers in the world and I've been working on some fantastic commissions for her. It's sort of, I didn't know that was coming, so it's, it, it, you never really know who you're going to meet and what, what it's going to lead to. These two are going to lift the bronze out with the crucible and pour it into the ceramic. This is sort of the exciting part. Commissions can be wonderful. I have been commissioned by some wonderful companies. One of the first commissions I got, I did a bullhead for Merrill Lynch, which went into their London headquarters. Put a leopard into the Four Seasons Hotel. Working with a client who's got, you know, something specific they want, they've got an error they want to put it in. But it's fun, I enjoy it. Yeah, I can hear it all catching, that's good. Oh, we're in. And, you know, for me to come back and make something so specific, uh, I really enjoy. <laughs> Goodman's Fields was uh, my first big public art commission. Mr. Goodman had a livery there. And he would have had a collection of horses useful for different things. So one of them would have been a taxi horse, one of them would have been a cart horse, a brewery horse, etc., etc. So I, I made six horses running through this wonderful landscape. It's become a bit of a landmark. It went on and won the Public Sculpture and Monuments Association Award, which I was really chuffed about. When the bronze cools, the next job is to expose the bronze. 
So it's ceramic, it's as hard as a cup, um, and it basically means smacking off. Here we've got the bronze which has been chased. This thing is chasing the metal back to how my original looked. When it's in clay, I can push my finger through it so easily and quickly, so this is a real skill. The process of buying art, it should be a fun one. You know, it's not like you're doing a tax return. And you should end up with a sculpture that either brings back a memory or is of a subject you're very passionate about. In our kitchen, we've got Hamish's elephant. I know. That's the centerpiece. I love seeing where people put them and how they're displayed. Where they end up, how they're installed, is a really important part of selling a sculpture. I do like that you're putting colour on them. Do you but like I mean, the colour? But am I correct that I've never seen colour on any of your sculptures? No. In the three and years we're I've doing it with, with oxides. At the end of the process, I'm probably one of few sculptors who does most of their own patination. And I think you can very much make or break a sculpture with the patina. Being a sculptor, it's everything. It's my life. It's my hobbies, it's my passion. It's fun. And I'm really lucky to be making a living out of something which I'm really passionate about and I, and I love. Thank you.